Awesome. All right. Good to go. Sorry for the delay again. A few minutes later, but um, let's rock and roll. So um, I was really happy with when I was making this presentation. It kind of morphed into something. This was just going to be a webinar on counting combinations and learning how to count combos of hands um, and like how blockers and card removals affect um, affect combinations and then it kind of morphed into a range composition discussion and I think that is was good because I think it's a little more relevant and a little more real life and basically today we're going to be looking into a hand example um, basically looking at two ranges a flop and looking at how the two ranges interact with the flop and how the different combinations and what percentage of each range as we'll get into later on. And so I think this is just going to be a really good discussion on equity and how ranges kind of interact with, with a board. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. It's going to get a little technical, but uh, we'll work through it. And then we'll obviously have a lot of time for questions at the end. Um, hope everyone's excited for the World Series coming up. Hopefully everyone's got a trip out here to Las Vegas planned. It's cold. It has... <laughs> We just set a record for like 65 degrees or something. It was the coldest day ever in May. So uh, it's not 100 degrees like normal yet. But um, yeah, I'm excited for the World Series to start. And uh, let's get, let's, you know, go out there and win some tournaments. So uh, how this came up was uh, just, I always get asked, what are some quick ways to count the combinations of nutted hands when the flop comes out? How can I use combos to determine the correct strategy and what is the relationship between combos and my range? So we're going to kind of get into each of these topics and uh, show a couple of programs that I use to do this. Um, first, let's talk about the setup that we're going to be using in this webinar. Um, all the examples are going to flow off of this, uh, this setup. Um, middle position is going to raise to two and a half big blinds. Uh, we're going to say these are like 100 big blind starting stack ranges. Uh, the big blind is going to call, and these are going to be the two ranges. So on the left here is your middle position range. It's about 18% of hands. Um, middle position, 18%. We're not raising up the deuces and threes. Fours are going to be there. Um, Ace-10 off. None of these offsuit 10 broadways. King-jack, queen-jack. King eight suited are better, and then all the suited aces and suited nines are better. So pretty tight, uh, 18% range. This would be kind of the low jack, under the gun plus two, somewhere of that nature. Big blind defending range on the right, very wide range, mostly suited card heavy. Um, we're just going to be pure three betting like queens kings and aces and ace king i didn't take out any combinations for bluffs obviously we're going to want to three bet some hands for bluffs but no hand is really going to be like we have to three bet this hand every time like sometimes we're going to three bet seven six suited eight six suited you know these type of hands maybe an ace five suited but i just left them in there so just to make it clearer and easier but these are the value hands basically that we never have um the only suited hands we're folding are these really crappy 8-3 suited, 8-deuce, 7-deuce suited, uh, folding a few of the offsuit aces, folding all this junky offsuit stuff. So uh, pretty wide, typical big blind defending range that we've talked about. And um, be in the big blind range out of uh, 1,326 combinations, we have about 644. So this is a roughly about 50% range of hands. Uh, roughly 50%. This is about 18%. Um, so we'll go back and reference that setup a little bit more. But first, let's get into the basics. Um, I have a question for you guys. You guys can go ahead and answer in the questions. Or say, how many ways is there to make an unpaired hand both how many suited combinations is there and how many offsuit combinations and how many total combinations of a way let's just take ace king for example how many combinations of ace king total are there when, that you could be dealt pre-flop
Okay, see some 16, 12 offsuit, four suited. Correct, a lot of you saying 16. This is uh, correct. There's 16 ways to be dealt any unpaired hand. So you can have 12 combinations of the offsuit variety and four combination of the full, uh, four combinations of the suited variety. And how many ways is there to make a paired hand preflop? How many combinations can you get dealt? Correct. There are six combinations of every paired hand. Six ways to make a paired hand. So the important, um, the important uh, kind of relationship you need to make there is there's 16 ways to get dealt an unpaired hand and six ways to be dealt a paired hand. So it is just under three times as likely that you're going to be dealt a unpaired hand than a paired hand. So that's a, a kind of an important relationship to remember uh, when uh, thinking about ranges and the percentages of ranges. We'll get into that in a, a, a little later. So we got that part figured out. Let's uh, kind of expand on our example a little bit. We're going to say the flop now is the king of hearts, the six of clubs, and the five of diamonds. Um, how many combinations of king, queen are available on this king of hearts, six of clubs, five of diamonds board? Give you guys a second. Go ahead and type into the questions. Um, yeah, I guess it does say it on the, <laughs> so <laughs> yes, you guys are getting in there. There's 12 combinations in the slide. I kind of get on how to do it. So there's four kings and four queens in the deck of cards. We have the king of hearts on the board. So there's three remaining kings in the deck. There's four remaining queens. That equals 12 combinations. So originally there were 16. Now that there's a king on the board, 25% of those combinations are eliminated. So it's about 25% less likely that uh, someone has king queen on this king six five board. Um, so now that we don't have the answer on the slide, uh, we're going to say that we're in the big blind and we have the king six of hearts in the big blind. So when we have the king six of hearts in the big blind, how many combinations of king queen remain? All right. So I see a bunch of eights. This is correct. Eight. So now when we have the king six of hearts, there's two kings remaining. I guess we can't have the king six of hearts. We're going to say we have the king six of diamonds. This is going to be diamonds. Sorry, I was dealing with technical issues and all, all the proofreads didn't get to go through. So uh, we have the king six of diamonds. So there's two kings left in the deck. There's the king of clubs and the king of spades. There are, there are four queens left in the deck. So two kings times the four queens, there are eight combinations of king queen remaining. How many combinations? So let's uh, expand on our, now we're talking about a singular hand. Now let's talk about sets. So how many possible combinations of sets remain on this board when we have the king six of diamonds in our hand? So we see four, I see seven, I see six, I see 12. I see one correct answer so far, two correct answers. We got, I got them, we got a little more complicated. Uh, we got the easy ones before. All right, so we see a bunch, uh, I see a bunch of different uh, answers here. Let's walk through it really quick. So pocket kings. There's one combination left of pocket kings, right? We have the king of diamonds in our hand. The king of hearts is on the board. The only combination of pocket kings left is the king of clubs and the king of spades. So we have one combination of pocket kings. How about pocket sixes? Well, it's the same situation as kings. There's only one combination of pocket sixes left. The, king of the six of clubs is gone. The six of diamonds is gone. So there's the six of hearts and the six of spades. So we have one combination of pocket sixes. And... What about pocket fives? Pocket fives, there are three combinations left. So 
there's one five gone when there's a five gone there's now there's only three combinations of sets left so there are five total combinations of sets available on this board so uh frank frank got this one right jim bushmeyer got it right roberto sammy jonathan howe a few others so we got five sets on this board remaining so having a king and a six if we didn't have any of the pairs say we had eight seven there'd be nine sets available because there'd be three combinations of pocket fives three combinations of pocket sixes and three combinations of pocket kings remaining so we've almost reduced we reduced the combinations of sets by almost a half now last one on this board how many combinations of over pairs remain on this board See some answers coming in. Four, six, 12. All right. Most of you got this right. Six is the correct answer. The only over pair available on this board is pocket aces. And there, as we talked about earlier, there are six ways to be dealt an over pair. So we don't have any blockers to that. So there are six possible uh, combinations of pocket aces available. So. Now we know there are eight combinations of king queen, five combinations of sets, one combination of overpair. You can even go further. How many ace kings are there? There's eight ace kings, same as king queen. So we know there's, you know, king queen or better. There's 16 one pair combos, five sets. That's 21. Let's see over pair. That's 27. And so kind of getting an idea of how strong. Um, yeah, the, I didn't put the answers there in the webinar because I wanted to get you guys to answer on that one. The first one I did. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, the recording of this will be back on YouTube. And so, uh, um, the recording will be back on YouTube so you can listen back at the answers again. So this is kind of the quick introduction of counting combinations and, but we're going to get a little more in depth. This is kind of what I originally have the webinar going through but we're gonna get a little more in depth today and kind of look at uh, the composition of these ranges and like percentages and some equity and uh, I think this is the stuff that's really important um, for high-level poker thinking this is kind of that next level stuff that a lot of the professionals are thinking about so now that we have a basic understanding of counting combinations Let's go ahead and look into uh, this example a little bit more. So uh, we changed the board here. So from the uh, from the original, the basic side. So we have that same setup. Middle position raises to two and a half times the big blind. The big blind defends. And the flop we're going to use for the rest of the webinar is the king of diamonds, eight of clubs, four clubs board. And on the right here, you see a chart that I copy pasted on here. This is from Equilab. Power Equilab is a very powerful program in the order of doing equity calculations for range versus range. So here, MP2 is, this is basically the written version of this range right here, the 18% opening range. So Pocket fours are better, all the suited aces, king eight suited plus, queen nine suited, jack nine suited, etc. Same range. Here's the big blind defending range right here. These are all the hands we're calling from the big blind. And I just ran a simple equity calculation on this king eight four with eight four of clubs in the king of diamonds. As you can see here, middle position has a 61% range advantage on this flop versus the big blind. So what we're going to do is dive into this a little deeper, look at how uh, many combos of different types of hands that each opponent has and kind of figure out why does MP have such a big range advantage on this board. 61% is a pretty substantial range advantage. And then we're going to kind of look into what does that equity allow us to do on this slot. So 
So, first, let's dive into this more. I got the two ranges up here. Middle position, big blind. Nothing's changed. Two and a half rays, big blind defends. King of diamonds, eight of clubs, four of clubs. So, first question I have for you guys. Who has more combinations of top pair in their range? So, what I want you to do, take a second. We're going to look, look at these ranges here, and we're looking at the king, obviously. So, we're looking at top pair king. Who has more total combinations of top pair in their range? Give you guys a second to um, think about this, and I'm seeing kind of a mix of answers so far. Big blind, MP. So, season big blind, MP, MP, big blind. So, this is a little bit of a trick question. And the next slide, once we get through these questions, is going to, uh, you'll kind of see the pattern that we're going to be getting at. So, who has more total combinations of top pair? Big blind has more total combinations of top pair. So, Let's look at here, middle position. They're playing king eight suited or better. Offsuit kings down to king jack off. So they have king jack off, king queen off, king queen suited, king jack suited, king ten suited, king nine suited, king eight suited. So king on the board, they have three total combinations of these king queen through king eight. So three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen combos of suited kings, and then twenty-four of these. So should be thirty-nine total combinations. And then, uh, so someone just got it completely right. Mr. Howe. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, but let's look at the big blind. Big blind has every single suited king. King, every single suited king and way more offsuit kings down to king eight offsuit. So the big blind has more total combinations. Who has a higher percentage of top pair? Maybe that is more of a kind of, that's the uh, more relevant question is kind of the point I'm trying to get to. So now who has the higher percentage of top pair in their range? Seeing a few answers coming in, middle position, middle position, middle position. So that is correct. The middle position, while has way less combinations of top pair, and we're going to look in this in the next slide, the middle position player has a way higher percentage of top pair, even though they have less total combinations of top pair. And that's just because they don't have all this junk right in here. He doesn't have all this junk that the big blind has. And so even though he has less total top pair, as a percentage of his range, as we'll see in the next slide, he has a significant higher percentage of top pair. Um, okay, so let's get into a little bit of combo counting here. Um, how many combinations, I'm gonna add this to the slide. Let's go, let's do this one. Practice counting combos from the range. How many combinations of two pair does MP have. All right, so uh, in the chat, respond. How many combinations of two pair does the middle position player have? To take a look at this range right here. Let's see, sixteen. I see a couple of. Uh, I see two, um, two so far. I see two correct answers. A lot of people saying four, eight. All right. So Sergey, Lewis Powell, and Jonathan Howe, you guys are correct. There's only two combinations of two pair for the middle position player. This hand right here, the king eight suited. So king eight suited, there's four ways to be dealt, correct? But the king of diamonds and eight of clubs are on the board. 
So the only combinations he can have are the King Eight of Hearts and the King Eight of Spades. He can't have King Eight of Clubs or King Eight of Diamonds. Those cards are on the board. So middle position has two total combinations of two pair hands. Um, let's look at the big blind. Let's get a little more technical. And I'm going to do it with you guys because I just added this. How many combinations of two pair does the big blind have? See some four, seven, ten, fifteen. Twelve. Nine, eight. I don't know if I see the number that I got so far. Oh no, no. I forgot one. Haha. <laughs> uh one second, let me refigure out my answer. So let's walk through this together. Um, I always start with the offsuit combos because those are the most likely combinations or the highest number and kind of gives you an idea of how relative the two pairs are. So the only offsuit combination of two pair that he can have is the king eight offsuit, correct? King eight off, he's not playing king four off. Big blind's not calling with 8-4 offsuit. So king-8 offsuit is the only offsuit combination. This is a kind of the first thing I always do when the flop comes out. My opponent flop comes out, and I go, how many offsuit combinations of two pair does my opponent have? That's a huge question to ask yourself right away because, uh, you know, say this board was king-jack-10. Well, now he could have king-jack, king-10. You know, then he's way more likely to have two pair. But this board, he can only have really suited. So king-8 offsuit, there's three kings left, three eights left. So three times three, he can have nine combinations of king eight offsuit. Okay, so now let's go into suited two pairs. Um, he can have. Let's write this down as we go. So he can have nine king eight off, uh, king eight suited. So king eight suited, he can have two combos. King four suited, two more combos. And then the eight four suited. That's the worst eight he's connecting. Eight four suited. So there's eight eight of clubs, four clubs. So he has three combinations. Three combinations of eight four suited. So nine, two is eleven, thirteen, sixteen total combinations of two pair for the big blind. Yeah, so uh, I actually made a mistake there. Someone just caught that on, Jonathan, Howe, and Sergey. I made an actual mistake there. I double counted the king eight suited because I was trying to make the point there of the suited. So yeah, it is. Uh, there are only nine. There's nine total combinations of the king eight hand, two king four suited, and three eight four suited. And so uh, I did make a mistake there. So yes, it is difficult to do on the fly, Mike. It does take a lot of practice. As you can see there, I just made a mistake as I'm presenting to 200 people doing it. So there are uh, 14 combinations of two pair available here for us in the big blind. Versus the uh, big blind only has two combinations total of the uh, two pair. Um, next. Who has more flush draws on this board? Flush draws, take a look at these graphs. Correct. Yep, so you guys are spot on on this one. The big blind has way more flush draws than the position. So middle position has all some flush draws, mostly the suited aces and suited kings. 
Big Blind is defending almost every suited combination, so they have every single club combination on the board. Um, and so Big Blind always going to have a big flush advantage on this board. And who has more nothing on this board? Who has completely whiffed this board more? Yep, so um, I've seen the correct answer a lot. The big blind has completely whiffed this board a lot. Um, and we're going to get into this, 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 uh, this PowerPoint might go a little longer than normal because we have some cool stuff coming up that I want to show you guys. Um, yeah, the big blind just has nothing here so often. The big blind has 10 five of hearts. 10 five of hearts has pretty much nothing, just one over card to the second pair. Um, you know, the nothings for the MP are going to be still like Jack nine suited. He's going to have, you know, two overs to the eight backdoor straight draw. Basically, he's always going to have like a backdoor straight draw with his nothing. Um, but big blind just has some real trashy equity hands. So we looked at this big blind has more total combinations. The top pair has more total combinations of two pair and he has more flush draws. So big blind has more combinations of top pair, more combinations of two pair and more flush draws. So why does him? Why does the imposition player have a 61% equity advantage? And it all comes back to this first question I asked, who has the higher percentage? And it has to do with the range composition. And this is what we're going to look at here. So here we have copy and pasted uh, from, this is from PyroSolver here. If you put in these two ranges in the board, I can go into the range explorer. And this is kind of the composition of each range. Uh, here, so we have the MP range and the big blind range. So let's take a look at this. Uh, first, let's look at this top pair line. So confirmed, MP has 42 combos of top pair. And the big blind has 63 combos of top pair. So the big blind has top, like about almost 50% more combos, 63 to 42 actually exactly 50% more combos of top pair. But the key point here is the percentages. Middle position has top pair almost 20% of the time as a composition of his range. Big blind only has top pair about 11% of the time. So almost twice as often, MP has top pair despite having less combos. Uh, next, we looked at two pairs. All right. This is where the big blind does have an advantage. 51 combos of, uh, sorry, that's second pair. Um, yeah, what was the two pair? Oh, sorry, two pair up here. 14 combos of two pair versus two combos. But look kind of how irrelevant two pair is to the overall range. That's kind of the, you know, people will freak out on this board. This board comes out, oh, the big blind can have king eight offsuit and I don't have king eight offsuit and they can have king four suited and king eight suited. You know, he has all these two pairs that I don't have. This is kind of a scary board for me being in middle position. We have it 1%. Two pair only makes up two and a half percent of the big blinds range. That's how wide this freaking range is, is that the big blind only has two pair, two and a half percent of the time. Sets, um, in position has all three sets, kings, eights, and fours, nine combinations, eight four point one percent of the uh, total range. Six combos, so only three less, 50% less. It's only 1% of the overall range. And so, one thing I like to do here, top pair are better. So, let's look here, MP, top pair, 19%, over pair is another 3%. So um, another 1% of two pair. So let's do this some quick fudging math. This is like 22%, 23, 27% of the time. So 27% of the time, the MP has top pair or better. Yeah, uh, Mike, in the next slide, we're gonna get into the uh, draws. I'll show you that in the next slide. Um, so top pair or better, 
27% of the time. That's a huge chunk. So over a quarter of the time, MP is going to have either a king or over pair or a set or two pair. Basically, a hand that they're happy to put a lot of money into the pot. Big blind only has that three and a half plus 11, about 15% of the time. So about half the time um, as the uh, imposition player does. Um, and then let's like count in these. So under pairs are going to be pairs from uh, pocket nines through pocket queens. So better than second pair, but under the top pair. That's another huge portion of the MP's range. That's another 11% of his range. 24 combos of nines, tens, jacks, queens. Six combos of each, four of them. So that's 24 combos, 11%. So let's add that now. That's almost like 38%. So almost 40% of the time, MP is going to have a hand that is pocket nines or better on this board. 40% of the time. That's a lot. <laughs> 40% versus here, under pair, he has 18 combos. He just doesn't have queens. That's the difference here. 24 combos MP. Big blind only has 18 because we do not have pocket queens, as you can see down here. But that's only 3% of his range versus 11% over here. So this is where the MP gets, gets a huge advantage. 13, 15, 16% of the time, the big blind has a hand better than second pair versus... In position, 40% of the time has a hand better than second pair. And this is why the point I was trying to make earlier. These percentages are way more important than these combos. The thing you need to realize, I want to go back to the first slide. Big blind, 644 combinations. MP, 250 combinations. So... The fact that MP just starts with such a much tighter range, he just is not going to whiff these boards as much. And then we'll look before we move on really quick. Um, the big blind has nothing 16% um, of the time and then ace high 32% of the time versus here. So roughly the other half of the time MP has either ace high or nothing. Um, and then here ace high or nothing roughly 60% of the time, so almost 50% more often. And as uh, I believe it was Mike pointed out, this isn't the full story. Let's look one more. Here we're going to look at the draws. Same board, same everything, but these are the draws. And uh, we're going to focus on the flush draw combos here. So middle position has 20 combinations of flush draws. Big blind has 50 combinations. So like you guys said in the previous slide, Big blind has way more combinations of flush draws. But let's look at this. 9% of his range, 8.7% of his range. So it's almost just as likely, even though big blind has two and a half times more flush draws, it's pretty it's the exact same probability that MP has a flush draw on this board and big blind has a flush draw on this board. And where are the flush draws coming from from MP? Nut flush draws, king high flush draws. Um, this is a pretty big deal to realize here because, uh, you know, on the flush completer, etc. Now, this story will get a uh, bit more skewed. We don't get into We're not going to get into this as much on this because it gets a little too much complicated, Mike. But it is kind of relevant, Mike, because let's say as we get into the strategy here, Big blind checks, middle position bets, big blind calls. How are these percentages? And you guys can answer this in the chat. MP checks, or sorry, big blind checks, MP bets, big blind calls. How do these percentages change once the big blind calls a bet? What's going to happen to this percentage for the big blinds flush draws when he calls a bet? So, yep, Sergey, completely right. It's going to become way higher. So, when we bet in middle position, the big blind calls. What is the big blind going to do here with his jack seven of diamonds? 
You're, let's even get more. Jack seven of diamonds has a backdoor flush out. What's he do with Jack seven of hearts? Gone. Jack six of hearts. Gone. Nine seven of hearts. Gone. Eight six of diamonds. Gone. Well, not eight six of diamonds. Sorry. Seven. Yeah, let's, you get the point I'm trying to make here. All these queen high, no no backdoor, no clubs. Gone. 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 Basically, when big blind calls here, he's going to have a king, an eight, a four, some type of, you know, straight shot, gut shot. And for reference, when I say call, I'm going to include calling or check raising. He continues, we're going to say. When he continues on this board, he's going to have some type of, you know, five, six, six, seven, straight draw here. Maybe he has, like, his weakest hands are going to be like his queen jack of diamonds, jack ten of diamonds, two overs, backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw. But, and then the other group of hands, every single club draw. All 50 combinations of club draws. They're never folding. So he has 50 combinations of flush draws that are all continuing. All his fours, all his eights, and all his kings. So now, big blinds range is now a very, very high percentage of flush draws. That's going to be his, probably his highest percentage hand category once the turn comes into play. So... That's kind of the next step of this process is thinking about, okay, once he bets, and it's the reason it's going to increase so much is because all this junk the big blind has is just gone. He's just going to eliminate that by folding to the bet, and that's why MP wants to bet on this board is because he just gets to fold out all this junk, and then uh, they get to play some turns and rivers. Correct, Jeremy. Whether or not they fold might depend on the bet size, but the flush draw is going to call any bet size. Like, maybe his... Uh, Nine deuce of clubs folds if you bet 2x pot, but it's calling a pot size bet. You know, we're 100 big blinds deep in this example, so percentages of hands, you know, we have a, uh, we'll, what we're going to get, we'll wait until we get into the next part for it to get into that. So, same combinations on the flop percentages, but big blinds is going to go way up. And ours is going to kind of stay the same because, as you're going to see here soon, um, it's kind of a wrap-up to this point. The players always tend to care. Think about the worst-case scenario. He could have two pair or he could have a set. The key is not to think of how many combinations of pairs and sets. Like, oh, my gosh, he has three combinations of pocket deuces that I don't have because I three-bet pre-flop. Think of it in terms of percentage of range. The percentages of the range, and you don't need to be exact on this, but in in game, the uh, the correct like the correct way to think about this is so this flop comes out the king eight four immediately the big blind call you should just think what is the most likely types of hands he should have and the most likely hand he has is nothing. And then, like, what's the most likely type of made hand he has in here? It's just, it's most likely going to be one pair. Yeah, he could have two pair. He could have sets. He could have, he could have flush draws. But those are just such small percentages of his range. He's only going to have top pair 10% of the time. And you could think about this, and we'll get into this, like, with a little bit with what your homework could be in the, after this webinar, is just thinking about just how likely certain types of hands are. So, big blind has a wide range. Even though he has more top pairs, it's a smaller percentage of his range. So, we're getting to get into a little strategy segment here. So, you see the scenario here on the bottom. Big blind checks. We have that same king eight four club board. You've seen the ranges. You've seen the range composition now. So, let's put it into practice. Big blind checks. What percentage of the time should MP choose to bet? 33% of the time, 50% of the time, 75% of the time, or 100% of the time. And what sizing should MP use when C betting? 33%, 50% of the pot, 75% pot, or 100% pot? So answer both questions. <coughs> Give you guys a second. How often should MP bet and what sizing?
So I see some hundreds, 50%. See kind of a mixing. A lot of people hitting 33% sizing. So MP should bet 100% of his range on this board when checked to. 100% of his range. And we're going to use around the 33% pot sizing. So if you were to use a solver, PO solver, where I ran this, this is going to be the solution. But once you learn to kind of recognize these range compositions, you'll learn why. It's going to be pretty obvious when I kind of point out a few things. And these are kind of the properties of specific properties. And this is kind of what you want to look at for when you choose to see bet and when you don't choose to see bet. First, equity advantage. Remember we ran that earlier here? 61%. MP has a large equity advantage, 61%. MP also has the nut advantage, not incredibly relevant on this board, but middle position has aces, kings, and ace king, and all the sets. Big blind doesn't have the top of his range there. Basically, middle position benefits from betting every hand in his range. And we're going to kind of walk, why does he, and it's because of his large equity advantage that he gets to do this. And why does MP have such a large equity advantage on this board? Big blind has nothing over 40% of the time. An ace high, another 20%. So 60% of the big blinds range, this is the key part here. 60% of the big blinds range is ace high or worse. We looked at it over here. He has nothing, 41%. Ace high, another 21%. But some of these ace high are... Ace five offsuit, ace six offsuit, ace seven offsuit. They have nothing going for it. Even ace five of hearts. Ace five of hearts basically has nothing going for it on this board. So 60% of this time, his range is going to, you know, be a really crappy hand. So what does he have to do when MP bets? If you bet, he's going to probably have to fold all 60% of these hands. So 60% of the time, he's going to have to fold all these hands. Um, a few of these hands are going to be his straight draws and stuff. So when we go in here, he has uh, 33 gut shots. Big blind, four out straight draw. So this is going to be his five, six, and six sevens. And like seven, five suited. So thirty, another 6% of those are going to be able to continue in some way with the straight draw. But kind of beside the point, just trying to there. So another reason... So the first reason, big blind has nothing 60% of the time. Second reason, MP has twi top pair twice as often as MP. And that all goes further. The MP has pocket nines are better 40% of the time versus the MP only has it. Sorry. Um, big blind only has it 16%. And the MP just has way less nothing. So... This page right here, this is basically what allows you to bet. You don't get a bet on the flop just because you raise pre-flop. You get a bet on the flop because of these reasons right here. And the larger your equity advantage, the more often you get a bet. So pretty much every time you have more than a 60% equity advantage, you just get a bet every single time. And quick lesson on range sizing, we're going to wrap this up. The more often you bet, the smaller size you want to use. So here we're betting 100% of a range, so we're going to choose a small size, 33%. Let's say the board was 754 with two diamonds. Okay? Better board for the big blind, much better board for the big blind. They're going to have some straights. They're going to have some two pairs that we don't have. Um, you know, Tons of straight draws, more straight draws, more everything. But we still have an equity advantage. We, we're probably going to have... I don't know, 54%, I would say, 55%. And so we're going to bet less often on that board, but we're probably going to use a bigger size than when we do. So the less often you bet, most the, in general, the bigger size you're going to use, and the more often you're going to bet with your range, the larger size you, or the sm smaller size you're going to use. Sorry. More frequent, smaller sizing, less frequent, bigger sizing. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. So, and, and Chuck, in, in general, this is kind of true for all streets. So I see a bunch of questions. We're going to get into those in a second. 
We still have about 15 more minutes um, for questions and everything. I have to get through the uh, poker coaching. Okay. But first, I want to get through one quick thing, homework. This is how I study homework. Someone asked earlier, is this how you study off the tables? This is one of the ways I study off the table. When I run a hand in Pio Solver or in an equity qual calculation, the first thing I do is I look at, the first thing I do before I look at any solution or anything is I look at my equities. So I'll look at the equity advantage of range versus range. And then I look at this, this chart right here. These, this is the most, if Pio Solver is, you know, I use it. But the most important tool in Pyro Solver is this, this Range Explorer. This is one of the most important tools, but you don't need Pyro Solver to use this. If you go to Equilab, um, Equilab has a, a, a uh, Empower Equilab has a free version, I'm pretty sure. You can look into it, it's not as pretty as this. This is why I like the Pyro Solver one, but you can look at your range composition there. And so, homework, so for example, I'm playing a tournament at the Venetian in about two hours. Yeah, Flopzilla has something, and pretty much all the equity calculators have some type of range composition like this. So what I'm gonna do, like part of my warm up routine for about five minutes this morning before I go play is, for example, if I wanna do MP versus big blind, and I'm gonna change it up. I'll plug in these two ranges, big blind MP. And if you go into Equilab, you can generate random flops. So I'll put these two ranges in and I'll just generate a random flop and it's gonna say 547. And I'm gonna say 547, I'm gonna say MP has a 54% equity. And then I run it and see how close I was. And then I generate another flop, ace four deuce. I'm gonna say, okay, that's a good flop for MP, ace high board, MP is gonna have a 63% advantage, run it. And I will go through and the key for this homework is, is you want to be able to quickly recognize how good of the board is for you. So you want to be able to instantly recognize, you don't have to be exact, you don't have to know if it's 54% or 55%, but you want to know, is this board a 53% equity advantage or is this like a 65 equity advantage? Because that affects your strategy a lot. Because if it's 65, go ahead, just close your eyes and bet. Big blind can't do anything. If it's a 53%, now you need to think about it. You need to start checking a lot of hands and you need to figure out the best hands to check and bet. So figuring out, being able to recognize which flops are best for you right away is extremely, extremely, extremely important. And it's a great way to warm up. So when you're coming out to the World Series this summer, jump on your Equilab or your Flopzilla or whatever equity tool you use. Just start generating like... I think most of them have a tool to generate random flops and then just change it up. So I'll do a few in middle position. Then I'm going to change my range. This is part of the homework. So now I'm going to change my range, my button range, and I'm going to adjust the big blind range. Cause now he has a, he's going to start three betting ace queen suited ace queen pocket jacks. And then I'll run some from the big button versus big blind. And then I'll run some from under the gun versus big blind. And then when it gets really tricky, we'll start running some, I'm under the gun and the button flats, or I'm under the gun and under the gun one flats. And I'll just start putting in these ranges and running random flops and guessing equities. That's the homework. Practice it a lot every day, every single day. Use it as your warm up. That's how you get good at this. I'm not even that good at it yet. I'm off, you know, not a huge percentage, but like. There's some boards I don't realize, wow, I do have a decent size equity advantage. And the general rule is the earlier position you are against the big blind, you're probably going to have a, in like an early position against a big blind, you could probably just bet every single board often, other than like the really, really scary ones, like six, five, four. As you get to the button though, that's the trick. The button versus big blind, both ranges are really wide. The button almost never has more than like a 58% equity advantage. Maybe he gets 60% on a few boards, but the button is the position button versus big blind. You don't get to see bet. Like you see bet a decent amount, maybe half the time, 60% of the time, but you check back a lot on the button because you don't have as big of an equity advantage because you have more nothing. Your range looks a lot more like this than it does like this raising from the button, or at least it should. You should be raising a lot. 
All right. Fogercoaching.com. Some of you guys are um, on a free trial. If you are on a free trial, I highly recommend signing up. You get webinars like this. Uh, I do two a month. Normally pick a topic, something like this. So I like to get a little more technical. Some of the coaches do a little more. Um, you know, every coach has a little thing. Interactive hand quizzes. The hand quizzes are an amazing way to... Um, the hand quizzes are just a great way to warm up. So before I play the Venetian day, I'll go through a few hand quizzes. You know, you get to go through entire hands, pick the best answer. And it's a great way to warm up for your tournament. Go through some of those hand quizzes. Uh, and then the homework. Uh, a lot of you guys don't do the homework. I've been told by Jonathan Little that enough of you do not do um, the homework. The homework is basically going through this. This is the homework assignments Jonathan assigns. He gives you a flop, two ranges, the flop. Etc. And you get to go through this, but we just did the flop today. Turn and river, that's even gets more complicated. So and that's why I didn't go through it today, because we could do this for 10 hours if we wanted to talk about it. So, yeah, poker coaching. Um, you know, we got the one month rate, one year there's a discount. Uh, and then the three year discount is the, the $4.99 for the three year. You're getting that for three years of coaching. It's a huge bundle big package and you're just you, there's almost no way if you put the time and effort in if you do just the homework just the homework you'd get the value out of this getting to have a professional like jonathan review your homework and ranges um just just massive and so making sure that you uh do the homework and take full advantage of the uh taking full advantage of everything that the site has to offer is just massive one second. But yeah, so uh, we recently added Evan Jarvis on the as the coaching as well. Um, and, and so, yeah, one month you're paying $39 a month. At $39 a month, I guarantee you're going to get that value. But one year, at one year, you're paying $249. Three years, four ninety nine. Do the work, do the homework, do the coaching quizzes every week, and you're easily going to get that value out of this. So now we have uh, ten minutes. We'll go maybe fifteen, depending on how many questions there are, just because we started so late. So, um, Damien, I say this question familiar. And I kind of touched on it. Is this the main thing you study away from the table? Yes. Uh, equities is. Equities are everything in poker, and there's lots of different ways to describe equity, but basically every decision you make involves equity. And so understanding which flops are best for which range is one of the biggest first steps you need to do to take your game to the next level. Next, then, you can you need to figure out, well, what turns now are better for which range? You know, Is the flush completing card better for imposition or the big blind? Well, in this example, we figured out the flush completing turn is better for the big blind because the big blind is going to have a high percentage of uh, um, high percentage of flush draws in their calling range. Um, if the king comes, we know the king is way better for imposition because he has so many top pair hands. So, sounds like uh, Theris, I will see you at Venetian today. Come say hello. Hopefully you're on my table. If you are, I hope you know your equities and flop distributions because that's what I want to start pounding on you. Uh, is this program reference Ecolab? It is. I'll pull it up. Power Equilab. This is what the program looks like. This is Power Equilab. So you have this, you can go in and go, do, do, do. this is his range, okay. This is this guy's range, uh, this guy's a nit, he has aces and kings. And then this is what I was talking about, random, little dice here. Ace, 10, 3, 5, 4, 3, jack, 3, 4, etc. And then you can do evaluate, wow, kings plus, 91%. You know, so I'll go through there, practice with that a little bit. So that's Equilab. Ooh, Mike, Equilab also has an equity training quiz under the 
Tools tab. Thank you. I will check that out. Equity trainer quiz under the tools tab of Equilab. Check it out, Mike. Sorry. Sally, thank you very much. She said you made this very complex subject easier to understand. That is my goal. Sometimes I'm not really good at that. And a couple of my webinars I've done, I wasn't too happy with because I feel like I get a little too technical, but I'm glad to hear that I made the complex subject very easier because that is my ultimate goal when presenting these. And thank you for the good luck at the Venetian. Thank you for all that. What's my World Series schedule looks like? Um, pretty much tournaments every day. I'm not playing all a ton of the high buy-ins. I never do do in the summer because I think there's too much value in the low buy-ins. Pretty much I'm playing like a $1,500 average buy-in um, every day. So I'm playing you know, a lot of the 1Ks, 1500s, Venetians, Venetian win, World Series. I'm not too big on the bracelets, you know. If there's better events somewhere else, I'll go play them. But I do have a lot of World Series schedules because those tend to provide the most value. So you'll see me all over. You'll see me at a, uh, a lot of sit and goes. So whenever I bust a tournament, I go play sit and goes and I go play Mega Satellites. So if you're in the sit and go area, come say hi um, or come join my table. Uh, Brian Dingle, has anyone else had trouble using the range analyzer or form using MacBook? I don't think I have. I'm on Windows right now because I use uh, Boot Camp. But I think I've used it on my Mac. Um, but email support, um, and they will be able to answer that question for you. Thank you, Lewis. He thinks he said that Alex and myself do, my, do the best webinars on the site. It's funny because Alex and I go way back uh, when I was in college. Uh, I met Alex Fitzgerald and he kind of taught me everything I knew about poker at the time He kind of mentored me coming up in poker. He was already established I was just getting into poker and I would go over to his apartment and grind online and we would talk a lot of strategy and so uh, Is there a video for this presentation? Yeah, this will be reproduced on YouTube Playing any low rollers I'm assuming you mean like lower binds of the World Series. Yeah, a lot of my schedule is lower binds because I think those provide the highest value. Ryan Galloway, Galloway, how often should you be raising your button? Uh, my standard button raising range, 100 big blinds deep, is going to be around 50%. Standard. If there's two weak players in the blind, we're going to jack that up probably in the 60%, 65%. If there's tougher players in the blinds, Maybe I go to 45, but that's about as tight as I'll get. So, <laughs> And then when you get to like 20 big blinds, 30 big blinds, it's going to get lower, closer to that 40% range because they can just rejam on you. Jeremy Freeman, is it fair to say the examples covered assume reasonable play? I've been in similar situations where people would call this flop with ace high, no club. Everything I always talk about, articles, any of this stuff is always going to be uh, equilibrium. All right. So that's how you should study. You should study the equilibrium strategies and then you can deviate. You can figure out, okay, people, some people, and then he's saying, so some people will call this hand with ace high, no clubs. And they probably should because he has so much nothing he's going to call with hands like he should call with ace nine. Because he has two overcards to the eight, you're betting all your hands. You're going to bet a hand like queen nine suited that he dominates. You know, his ace high hands are pretty high equity boards. If you look at a uh, the equities of his hands, like ace nine on that board has like 50% equity. So he shouldn't be folding that to a bet. His, that hand is good enough to continue with. But ace deuce, different story. So, but basically what I'm trying to get at is, yes, everything is different. Now, if you know the big blind's tighter then you realize, all right, he's not going to have junk as much and he's going to have something a little more often. Big blind's looser, he's going to have more junk more often. Um, but it's good for you if he's continuing with these low equity hands. So the big, what's the adjustment you would make here, Jeremy? If you bet the flop and this player's calling with ace high with no clubs and calling with all this nonsense, the adjustment is not to bet the flop less. It's to start barreling the turn more now because you're going to have nothing way more. Thank you, everyone, for the compliments. Will I play the big 50? Yes, I will play the big 50. Hopefully only one time. Don't make me play that thing six times. 
Ed James, thoughts on the World Series Big 50 and multiple bullet firing? Uh, if you think you're plus EV, you should keep firing. It's a uh, Every bullet is a new tournament. It's not – now I have – you can't think of it as, oh, I've entered five times. Now if I enter this one, I have to get th th cash for $3,000 to break even. That's not the right mindset. The sixth time you enter, you have to cash for six five hundred dollars to break even. It's the same, you know. It's a new tournament. The other tournaments don't matter. Will Russell Wilson win this year? Of course he will. He's a winner. Am I playing the Millions Party Poker event at Aria? Probably not, because I'm assuming there's other one k and fifteen hundred events, and I'd rather play six fifteen hundreds rather than one ten k. Yes, Carlos. Combos work the exact same in cash games and tournaments, but realize the big blinds range in this example would be much tighter because they're getting a worse price because there's no antis. Cash games should have antis, side note. Uh, and so, um, yeah, the big blinds just going to have nothing way less often, so it just affects the ranges, and the equity advantages are never going to be as large. Tom Brady is not the greatest. Russell Wilson is. Jonathan Howell, please make more webinars at this time of the day because it's usually hard for people that you're up to join. Well, you're in for luck, Jonathan, because for the next two months, all my webinars will be at this time because uh, I play a tournament at 11 a.m. every day and I need to have the webinar finished in time so, uh, so that I can uh, get on to my tournament um, and I don't really have scheduled off days. So um, they might even be a little bit earlier at like 8.30 or 8 a.m., um, depending on if it's like a 10 a.m. start, I need to do it at 8 a.m. So, um, yeah, not necessarily. I don't know if I'm going to, there will be Saturdays. I'll try to do it, but it just depends on what the events are. What percentage of the field at the World Series of Poker has this type of range on? In the main event, out of 7,000 people, 300. 300 people think like this. There might be another 700, like 1,000 people that know this, but they, they don't have it known well enough to be able to think like this at the table. So, Mike, uh, if you bet 33%, per of course, you should call ace high, but if you bet 50% of the pot, maybe not. So if he calls too much, should you bet larger? Um. Yeah, if he's over calling, like if if he doesn't fold, like so the the thing would be if he calls ace high still to the bet fifty percent, then you'd start betting fifty percent because now he's calling with hands that he should fold to the larger sizing. So if he's but the thing is is you want him to like continue with those ace high hands. You don't want him to really fold ace high because you have hands like ace queen, ace jack, ace ten. You want him to like call with ace high and then you you have a lot of hands that dominate him. And so it's gonna be really hard for his ace high hands. Those are like really really marginal continues for him like big blind is just calling with ace highs just so that you're not running over him on the flop in like a, a kind of like in a solver world um but in reality like he's not making any money really calling with ace highs he's like breaking even or making a little bit at least his weaker ones um because just because he has no like when ace comes he's still not happy how often are you raising the donk bet villains donk bets uh, depends on the villain. Villains have different types of donk bets. I just wrote an article on why they are called donk bets. And if you want a quick, let's do a quick 15 second. Why is it called a donk bet? Because big blinds range has 39% and he's choosing to bet into a range that has 61% equity. So he's choosing to bet into a range that has more equity than him. That's why it's called a donk bet. So you have a lot of hands with a lot of equity, you can pounce on them. So you can do a lot of raising when you have that much equity. Can we get a webinar on EV? That's a pretty good topic. It's complicated, but yeah, probably. It sounds reasonable. Do any places in Vegas run cash games with antis? No, not that I know of. Some of the bigger games, um, like the 10, 20, 40 at Bellagio and stuff sometimes run with antis. Have I played any short deck? No. How many people usually enter the 11 a.m. dailies? A lot. I don't know. Once you get to the prime size, those dailies get like 1,000 people. 
How does the big blind ante versus full table ante affect ranges? We get this question every webinar. It does not affect any ranges at all, the big blind antes or the full table antes. I look old in that photo. <laughs> Coaching site. Oh, does poker coaching regularly follow these type of examples through the turn and river algorithms? Um, yeah, if, if you guys want for my next webinar, I can just take this example and I can do the exact same topic, but we could go to turns and we can look at different turn cards and even into some river cards. So, Jeff, if you guys like this, uh, we can just I can just expand this PowerPoint for the next one and we can look at. Uh, I'll, I'll, I can do a lot of screenshot of like pile. Basically, we just go through the example saying it went check, bet, call, and then we get to the turn. And we can look at a bunch of different uh, turn cards. So maybe that's what we will do on the next webinar. That sounds like that's what our next webinar is. Okay, so our next web webinar is going to be turn play. We'll go into turn play just because turn can get complicated. And then we'll go into river the following time. Rivers... Rivers just get into a polarizing game in general. So, um, all right, I gotta wrap this up. Uh, do you use this combo strategy with heads up? Yes. What time, percentage of the time do I cash tournaments? The World Series because I pay fifteen percent. I don't know, twenty five percent maybe. Mike, if you balance donks with a polarized, very strong to total bluff range, is it okay? Uh, no, um, not really, because your your other hands and your strat. It's the problem is like so. Say this king eight three four board, like okay, you could bet king queen for value, but when you start betting donking king queen, you have other hands in your range are losing EV. So this would be that EV that someone asked about. So the expected value of each hand, like your range loses value because you're betting those hands and you need to have those hands in your checking range to protect other hands. Um, there's very few scenarios where it's good to use donk betting and you're better off just checking a hundred percent because too many other hands in your range lose EV in order for you to like the little AV you gain in leading a hand. Uh, Lewis, in a way we discuss which webinars that we are discussing, but so that we don't overlap, but in general, we all have different coaching methods and different play methods. So even like if someone else did a, if, if Alex or Evan did a webinar on the same thing, I bet you guys would get just as much out of it, even though we've already covered it because they would teach it and discuss it in a different way. And they'd probably pick up different nuances that uh, I left out. All right, yep, I see it. We're doing turns, the next one. Uh, Carlos, range and range advantage are not the same term. Range is all the hands that you play at a certain line. Range advantage would be the equity. So MP has 61%. He has a range advantage. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you. Uh, see you guys at summer camp next week.